Welcome back for, uh, to this video. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed the earlier video where we showed you how to create a data visualization report using a perfect set of data without touching uh, some of the key functions in Power BI. The beauty of Power BI is in creating report, visualizing your data. Now, so in this video, I'm going to upgrade you by showing you some of the key functions. For example, uh, getting data from a folder instead of just using a file. Now, getting uh, get data from folder in Power Query is a very powerful way to update your report instantly. Now, with this feature, you can link to a folder containing multiple files and have your report updated as more files are added to the folder. Now, to, to the second one I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, we're going to go in and touch on the basic of Power Query where you can actually do cleaning up of the data, even when your data is not perfect. For example, when you download the data uh, from the system itself, you may contain the header, extra columns, uh, and you don't want them. And how do you actually remove them once and for all for future report as well? Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, about DEX. Well, I want to show you how to use DEX. And in this case, getting started with DEX, it is actually very simple. Now, just for your information, DEX stands for Data Analysis Expression, right? It's a very powerful function, and you're going to rely on that in Power BI to create more complicated calculations, which you will need in your data visualization. Of course, uh, we cannot miss out uh, the, third, uh, the fourth item here, which is to create visuals one of the powerful visuals that you can impress your audience with, your bosses, your co-worker with is a map visual. We shall tell, we shall tell them the sales, the, the uh, numbers that you want to show them in the map. Okay, in the map. That is very important. And now next thing is uh, when you go to Power BI, you also need to learn about how do you connect the different, how do you connect the different um data sources into one and so that you can actually connect and communicate with the different columns in all the different databases. Now, at the same time, I'm going to show you how to effectively manage data. That is actually a very important function. And once you know how to effectively manage the data itself, I'll tell you that anything that you do with dates, uh, you won't have any problem. For example, uh, different years, different months, year to date, all those will be relying on uh, this table called date table. Okay, so uh, without further delay, um, let's get started. Now, for those who do not know me, let me introduce myself. My name is Jason, and I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer as well as a Microsoft Certified Power BI Data Analyst. I'm also ECTA trained, and I have 30 years of experience in spreadsheet, in Excel, in data analysis, and the record of number of roles that I have done in uh, data analysis is 150 million rows of data. Right. Of course, we cannot use Excel to manage 150 million rows of data. In this case, I actually use this thing called a SQL Server. Now, don't worry about SQL Server. It's actually very high tech, um, more for the advanced users. For now, we're going to still base our data uh, on Excel files alone. All right. So um, let's get started with the Power BI report. Now, I'm going to show you what you will have at the end of uh, the video itself. So let me share my screen. Okay, so in uh, at the end of the video, uh, you will learn how to create uh, two tables, one for the group itself, one for the country. You're going to create this map visual that we see. You have learned about how to create uh, slices over here in the previous session. So uh, I'm going to just use it and show you again. All right, it is okay. And I'm going to create one on a pie chart. So you look at this uh, output here, the visualization of numbers in table form and in a pie chart over here can be very different and give you a very different outcome. All right. So without further delay, let's go into Power BI. Uh, this is a done deal report. So I'm going to create right from scratch again. Now I'm going to ditch away the previous report because that one is created based on a perfect sets of data. In real life, no perfect sets of data. Or most people will tell you that, oh, okay, if you want to do Power BI, you need to clean up the data in Excel, in da-da-da-da-da. Actually, 
it is not necessary because Power BI gave you all the tools and the functions that you need to create your perfect data and of course the perfect visualization report that you want. So let's get started with a new report. Okay, so uh, land report from scratch. Um, let me show you what I mean by getting data and how do you maintain your data. So in a very typical scenario, your report may not be a one-off thing. It could be a report that you have to continuously update with new information, either on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. And if you want to do that, you don't want to repeat the whole effort of creating the report again and again. So get data from folder will help you to uh, get data from folder will help you to um, eliminate all the extra repetitive effort that you need to maintain the data itself. Okay, so this is my uh, Windows Explorer. So go to training. Uh, let's say I go into the folder in my data itself. All right, so in here, I have a working file folder and I have sales data. So say for example, um, I'm going to start with only two files. I'm going to eliminate this one. Or let's say I will take these two, copy, uh, go to the get data. This is my working file. So I'm going to go into a 10 folder. And in this 10 folder, I'm going to create a new folder. So say assuming that uh, we are creating the report from scratch and setting it up. So here I'm going to put in my SLS data. So this will be the place where I'm going to put in first two files. Okay, 2018, uh, 2017 and 2018 sales data file. Now, let me show you how unclean the file can be. So I'll open up 2017 sales data file in Excel, right? In Excel. Okay, now when you open up a file and you download the file from the system, right, from the company system, chances are they give you headers like this. And if you want to do Power BI or pivot table or whatever report that you want, most of the time you need to delete away all the extra rows either on top, below, uh, as well as uh, sometimes you may want to remove some of the columns because you don't need them. And there are basically sometimes too many of them and you can actually slow you down. So question is, how do you do a cleanup for two files? And after that, you can use it over and over again. So the, the first rule is definitely to close the file. And let's head back to Power BI. Now, the 2018 file will have exactly the same layout as the 2017 file. They also have the headers. Of course, the header names are different. Uh, the number of columns are the same. The number of rows are different because different year will have different numbers. So you look at the file size here, you will see that there are actually two different files. All right, they don't have to be the same number of rows, but they definitely have to have the same number of columns, which is usually fixed. All right, so go into Power BI. Okay, and from here, the first thing is to get data, uh, something different from the previous session. So watch how I do it. Now I go to get data here, go to more. Okay, so if you go to all or you go to file, that file will be a bit more cleaner. So in file here, there is this option called folder. All right. Now, if your files are saved in a SharePoint folder because you are sharing that file with your colleague uh, or the IT could have saved and dropped all the downloaded files in there, that is when you can pull them. All right. So I'm going to go to folder, connect to the folder. Uh, we need to choose a folder. So we go to browse. Uh, I'm going to go to the folder that I am in, which is this one. And I'm going to go to this one, 10 folder. Remember I saved the file in the SLS data folder. So this will be the folder that I select. Click OK. And 
once you have done the selection, click OK. And let's wait for a while. And once they actually go into the folder and read the files in the folder, they will find two files that we have saved. 2017 sales data, 2018 sales data. Now, in the previous session, we do nothing to the cleanup, but today I'm going to show you the gleams of the Power Query and the power of Power Query, all right? So we need to, uh, in, in Get Data From Folder, we need to combine the two files into one. And at the same time, because I want to delete the rows and the columns, I will need to do Combine and Transform Data. Okay, so once you pull it in, okay, it reads the file. Uh, we have the same sheet one here for both files. And in sheet one here, you see, obviously, the title of the company, the sales transaction from 2017 to uh, 20, uh, 31st December 2017, empty rows. Then uh, in this row, it only starts off with the header. So uh, assuming that it's going to be like this format for the rest of the file. So what I can do is I select sheet one. As my sample. Now you may have many worksheets, but usually I will suggest that you keep it clean, right? To avoid confusion. So click OK. Jump right in. They will process the data. All right. And import the data into Power Query Editor. Okay, let's wait for a while. Maybe it has opened. Yeah, it opens up inside here. Okay, so this is the Power Query Editor. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to clean up the header. So this row I don't need, and this row I don't need. This will be my header row. So this will be on the third row. I need to remove the first two rows. So go to the Home tab here in Power Query Editor. Uh, click on to remove rows. They have different functions here. So I want to remove the top rows. Oh, before you go into that, there are once you get data from folder, you need to be very careful because this sales data that you are seeing here is a combined sets of data. So let me scroll down and show you what do I mean by combined sets of data when nothing has been processed here. Okay, it should be thousands of rows. So let me scroll down quickly. Ah, okay, uh, let me filter simply by going into the empty row and I click OK. And you notice that here uh, in this data file, it contains the header for the two file and there are also empty rows in there. Now in Power Query, if you do a wrong step or so you do a step and you don't want like what I've done here, I filter, there is this applied steps that you can remove that step. All right. There isn't any undo here, but you can remove steps. You can reorganize the steps. All right. But that, of course, is uh, left to the advanced users. For now, uh, we want to do this systematically. All right. So remove the filter rows here. We are back here. Now, so in this place here, how am I going to remove the, date, the header from every single file? You don't do it here. You actually go into the above here. There is this thing called transform sample file. So when you click on the transform sample file, they will treat that sample file and they will use whatever you do inside here. They will do it at, for every file that comes in. All right. So it's just like you put in 2017, you delete the rows. They bring in 2018, they'll delete the rows. You bring in 2019, they also delete the rows individually first then they will combine this into the sales data. All right, I'm going to show you how to remove the headers for every single file. So in this transform sample file here, I'm going to go to remove rows and in here, remove the top rows. Okay, how many rows am I removing? Two, right? One, two, and my header here is in the third row. So number of rows to remove, two, Click OK. Now, 
still not there yet because uh, this header is in row one. The header must be in the top here. So another functions in Power Query, all right, the basic functions in Power Query is to go to this thing called use first row as header and it will bump upgrade and remove the earlier header and use the first row as a header here. All right, now once you do this, you will notice that sales data has a warning icon. You go to sales data here, they'll tell you there is an error because things has changed. Uh, they cannot find some of the header here. So uh, what you need to do is go to this steps, error, go back to one step above, goes okay. So question is this step here, all right? So go onto this step, remove it. Now, once you remove the steps there, that one is to change the type and they do an auto change. For you so right inside here uh, more important to know is that the data itself are all uh, just like excel any data type they will take in but the more important thing in uh, power query is to make sure that you mark up the columns according to the data type for example text numbers and most important will be the date all right so let's say uh, i want the information here I will use the source, this is okay, this is okay. Now the date here, when you click onto the column or the date, you will see that the data type in the home tab here, all right, the data type shows any, not acceptable. So we need to take this, change data type and go into date. And once you change this into, mark up this into date here, later Power uh, BI will recognize that this is a date and treat it very differently. Now, another thing you can do, you can do it in two places. I can also delete columns over here. So let's say I don't want to confuse myself with all sorts of dates. And in this case, I want to remove the due date. I want to remove the shipping date. All right, simple way to remove. Click on the two column, or you can click onto one column, one column by itself. Press, right click here or press the delete key, right? You can remove column, Go on to the ship date here, right click, remove column. Okay, now uh, in here, you can leave the rest as is because we don't want to do anything. Uh, oh, there's something that I need to do here. Uh, the order quantity needs to be a number. You cannot accept, not that you cannot accept anything, but it is good to always mark it on and say this order quantity is whole number. So go to the data type again, click on this, and change this to phone number. All right, then uh, you will see the icon change to one, two, three, but you see the other's icon is A, B, C, one, two, three. That means it accepts N. Now, when you come to unit price, we also want change. In fact, I want change, uh, mark up the data type for unit price, total product cost, and the sales amount. So I'm going to do all three together. Click unit price, press the control key, Click total product cost, press continue to press the control key and select sales amount. And from here, I can go to the data type and change it all together. And I'm going to give it a fixed decimal number. Okay, now this is important because once you fix this, uh, Power Query will pick it up and say, these are all numbers I need to do a summation. Now, if it's any random, they may treat this as number they may also treat this as a uh, text and you don't want them to treat this as a text because you need to do the summation part. All right. So once you do this done nicely, happy, this will be the very basic starts of how to remove rows and columns uh, in your data file to make it clean. There are still other functions I'm going to show you in the future, but right now let's uh, start off by showing you the, some of the basic functions that you probably need. Now, from here, we need to close and apply, and this will pop over into Power BI Desktop, and in Power BI Desktop here, uh, it will be loading here, it will remove the ship date. You no longer see, see the ship date. You no longer see the due date. Uh, those are dates that are confusing. Now, another thing that uh, why we want to do this is also because uh, we want to make sure that our data that comes into Power BI Desktop is as small as possible 
but all the information that are necessary are there for us to work with. Right, so that is one important function that we need to do. Okay, now 20,814 rows uh, added. Now let's start by creating a simple table. Then I can show you how easy it is to maintain the file. All right, so go into the sales data here. You have the order date here. You have the date hierarchy. You notice the same thing happened. The order date will have the hierarchy. I'm going to ditch this later, but for the time being, just to show to you and complete the picture, I'll get data from folder. Okay, how powerful it can be. Okay, let's start with a simple table visual. Okay, this is the table visual icon. Uh, don't worry about the icon because after a while, if you look at this again and again and again, you will definitely become familiar with this. All right, so in this table uh, icon here, I'm going to drop in the year into the column. And uh, there is the summation sales amount here, and I'm going to drop it in. Okay, it's running, it's running. It takes a bit of time. Uh, this could be a bit too small. Then let me expand this. And you will see in the report here, there are 2017 numbers, 2018 numbers. All right, so let's, let me save this file first, just in case. So I'm going to save this file into a 10 folder. Okay, and I'm going to call this uh, level two video file or video demo, all right? So save the file. Okay, now let me show you the magic. All right, so go, I'm going to go back to the folder here. I'm going to go back to the sales data file, the working files, the Excel data file, the sales data file we have, 2019, uh, 2020, uh, January to uh, May over here. I'm going to take these two files. All right, now look at 2019, they have the same pattern as 2017 and 2018 file. Okay, so headers are here, similar, sheet one, same number of columns. So all I need to do is once you, I download the data from the system, imagine that you download data from the system and these are all the uh, unwanted rows and columns because what you want is the gist of it, that is the data itself. Okay, so what I'm going to do, take the two files, 2019 and 2020, 01 to 05, that's all, right? Control C to copy the file. I'm going to use the back button to go back to my uh, storage folder, sales data folder here, paste this in. Now, imagine you have created a report and you put in this so far. So in our Power BI report here, uh, we only have one table, okay? Just to, for the demonstration part. Now, how do I get the data in? Let's go to the Home tab here. All you need to do is look for the icon called Refresh. Click on it. They'll do exactly what they have done in 20, for, 20, for 2017 and 2018 file, and they'll do it for the 2019 and the 2020 files. Okay, files is updated, numbers are updated. So this visual just gets completed and that well, you are done with the update. Okay, if you have 10 visuals, then all the 10 visuals will all be updated with the same uh, year of data. So uh, imagine that you created the report and you need to add in uh, today's number, tomorrow's number, this week's number, next week's number, this month number, next month's number. All you have to do, put them into the folder, click the refresh button, and your report is completed. Definitely a time saver for you, all right? So this is how we improve our productivity. Uh, do less, okay? Do less and show more. Okay, so this is a table. I'm gonna leave this table here. And uh, in here, I'm going to create a uh, same thing, a text box, okay? Now, very important is your visual report. Do not focus just purely on the number. Aesthetic is especially important, all right? So that's also one of the wish list of, wish list of bosses because sometimes they need to show the report to 
maybe potential investors or their boss boss. And if the report is only just chunks of data numbers, it's not going to be very pleasant looking. All right. So you need to create a report that is professional looking. Your boss can just use it right away or he can, uh, he can actually see uh, all the numbers presented in a nicer visible way. Okay, so right inside here, I'm going to move this text box here. Now, in this text box, it's not going to be as dynamic here. Let me fix this. It's going to be just a simple text box. Um, I'm going to call this, what do I call this uh, in the sample part? Monthly sales report by region, and I have a page called location. All right, so let's go inside here. Uh, in page one, double click, change it to location. Okay, so in here, I'm going to call this monthly sales reports by region. Because too small, you can't see. And let's expand this a little bit, right? Typo, error, because there are two, uh, more than one capital letter in the description. So monthly sales report by region. Uh, I would choose something like 28 pixel. It should look pretty good. Okay, I'm going to bold this. And of course, in here, I'm going to hmm, go to effects. I'm going to choose to change the background to the usual blue. Of course, you can always choose different color. Hmm, let's say I choose a gold color, right? For a different effect. Okay, then this is how it looks like. Uh, I'm going to centralize this. I'm going to bold the whole data itself. So I need to highlight everything. Go to bold. Looks good. Now, of course, color combination, you have to be careful because it's not easy to uh, match some of the colors as well. So monthly sales report here, I'm going to change this to white color font. Okay, it should look better against a darker background. This table, okay, let's start with uh, creating a table. Now, before you create a table, actually, rightfully, it doesn't look nice with some of sales amount over here, right? So the whole idea behind the report is you can create simple measure. And uh, measures which is created using DEX is very important because you're going to do all sorts of calculation in here to prepare the data and to present it straight away. So everything when it's done with DEX will help you to save time in the future uh, for the updates of the report. So you don't have to manually do copy and paste in, you know, one by one. You know, some people will just do that in Excel and, oh, I find that it is very, very tedious and painful. So don't do that, okay? Don't do that in Excel. Don't do that in Power BI. Okay, so let's start this table itself. First, uh, let me create a measure, simple one. Okay, so uh, in the home tab here, you can go into new measure. Click on it, you want to run. Okay, they'll come up with a formula bar in this case, and they have this measure called the measure name. Uh, you will notice that in measure here, you also see the measure on the right-hand side as data, right? But when we change it, let's say I call this sales. Now in here, uh, how do we calculate the sales? Same thing as what you do in normal Excel, type in the word sum that, okay, this is not worksheet function, this is called DEX, all right? So once you learn Power BI, please do not call them Excel worksheet functions, all right? It's called DEX. You need to learn the industry uh, way of saying things, it's called DEX. And it's not called formula here, it is called uh, measure right if you are a data visualization expert you don't want to use layman's name you want to use the professional name called measure all right so uh type in the word sum open the bracket here now once you open the bracket they actually give you the full list of the data that you can sum now you cannot sum uh what can we not sum uh we do not some source.name. So you, okay, it shows up here, but you cannot some source.name, all right? So uh, we go to sum and we specifically look for sales amount here. And you see that the table name follows 
very important because this is not going to be our only table, all right? So close the bracket here, enter, and the measure will change into uh, core sales over here. Okay, it takes a while, it needs to process. Okay, because it starts with the word S, it jumps and gets sorted over here. All right. Now, the next thing you're going to do is, uh, I need to give you orientation of Power BI because straight away you jump into visualization. So you probably have not seen the other views as well. So this view that we have been showing you in the previous video and in this video, we call this the report view in Power BI desktop. All right. Now, what other views do we have? We have the data view on the left-hand side here, the data view, click on this. This is where you see the data as they get imported into Power BI Desktop. So you can always look at the numbers and check out what happens here. This is something like Excel, but this is called the data view. You can filter, check some of the numbers. If there's something wrong, you can always come here to check. All right. And then you do your cleanup in Power BI. I uh, no, yeah, you do your cleanup in Power Query. Okay, now then the third view that you have is called the model view. Now in model view, you will have different table and in different table, we'll, we can actually link them together without doing all in one single worksheet, right? Uh, when you actually want to create a people table, you know, combine, 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 do be look at all over the place. In here, not necessary, all right? Now, so how do I show you how to do data modeling? Uh, first is uh, DEX has a very powerful function that helps you to create a date table. Now, the due, the order date table, uh, order date cannot be used because they have pockets of missing dates. So in order to fully uh, maximize the use and make sure that you take advantage of the functions um, in Power BI, all right, you need to create a date table that runs from the first day all the way to the last day. Question is how to create one. All right, so let me show you. Uh, you go to home tab here in this view. You can go into the report view here. Let's see, is there a new table? Don't have, all right? So uh, table here, table view here, you have table tools, you can create a new table, all right? So Han Forest, uh, in the model view, you will definitely have a new table here. So I'm going to use this uh, new table icon, click on this. Okay, now the first, first DEX, no, not the first, first DEX, is the second DEX formula here is to create a table. All right. Hmm. How come it turns out this way? Okay, once you click on a table, you'll see it says table, right? This is a table summation column, nothing inside here. So I'm going to take the table name here and I'm going to call this uh, date. Now, not, not order date, but just date because it's a date table. Now, how do I actually generate the dates? Very, very simple, all right? Uh, 10 years ago, it's tough because you have to manually create them. Now, uh, with lots of improvement from Power BI, it is so easy, okay? Watch me. Type in the word calendar. So you just type in CA and you see that there are three DEX formulas that say starts with CA and I want this one, calendar auto. Now, for the, for the start, um, I'm going to show you uh, creating a calendar based on uh, calendar date, all right? Uh, you can actually do fiscal year here. If next, uh, after you learn how to do some, some of the sensitive function here, uh, you can actually use this to do uh, fiscal year, okay? In order not to confuse you. How should I confuse you? Hmm. Maybe I should because... Uh, the uh, fiscal years are very important, right? Uh, everybody know how to create a calendar based on calendar year, but not many people know how to create a calendar table based on the financial year. Okay, now commonly known in Singapore, uh, majority of companies that I work with, they always, if they are not on calendar, chances are they are, will start them um, financial year in April. Okay, that is very common. Of course, there are some who will start in June. There are some who starts in October. More commonly, it's either in January or in April, uh, especially the government agencies. So in here, fiscal month end 
fiscal year and month. So if my fiscal year ends uh, on March, then the number is three. Okay, they don't, you, you cannot key in March. You have to key in number three, third month of the year. Close the bracket here, enter. And the date table will auto generate itself and give you date. Boom. Okay, now you see a table here, date. Now you've got two tables here. All right, now let me go in and show you a bit of the date first before we show you how to link the two tables together. Now you need to go to the data view. In the data view, you can actually toggle between the two tables. This is the date table. You see it here highlighted. If I click onto the sales SRS data, it gives you the sales data view. The columns over here is where it shows up here. So in my date table, I only have the date. All right. Now watch this. The date starts from 1st April 2017. Okay, the date table is smart enough to say that if your data okay happen to touch anything after 1st April, even if your sales data doesn't start from 1st April, uh, they will make sure that this date table will start the first date from 1st April of that fiscal year. And where would it end? 30th, no, sorry, 31st March of the last dates they can encounter, they will encounter. All right, so once you have the date table here, we go back to the model view. Now, the beauty of this is I can then don't use the order date. I uh, The more important thing is uh, I don't use the order date, I will use date, all right? So I will click the date, which has the same format, okay, same data type, drag across, left click and drag across to the date table, and let go. Let me form a connection here. Uh, nicely done. Now, the date table will only publish one date per row. So it is a one, uh, one to many relationship because in the other date here, we will see the same date appearing uh, for many rows. Reason is because uh, sales will come, many, many sales will come in each day. So there will be many, many repetitive dates. So one to many relationship. Okay, so once you do that, then we can go into uh, the report view. We can then change the table. Okay, I'm gonna keep this table, uh, remove the order date, remove the sales amount. Not going to, we are not going to use the sum of sales amount, all right? We're going to do the professional way. Now, first, we're going to put the date. Now, once you see the date here, the order date hierarchy it disappears and the date here will appear with the date hierarchy. So new hierarchy being formed, all right? So I'm going to pull the date hierarchy into the column. It will show up here. Um, okay, I want to show only here. So I'm going to take the quarter off, the month off, and the day off. And in here, let's zoom in because this is our very first table is going to be tiny for the time being. Now I'm going to put the sales amount. So remember the thing that we do if the DEX is we do a calculation. It's not the calculation calculator on the left hand side of sales because this is a measure. A measure will come with a calculator icon. So drag the sales into the column here and voila, it comes up here. All the dates, uh, no sorry, all the sales listed down by year. Updated next 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 month next year. You just need to put in all the data into that folder. Click the refresh button. Everything else will change. Okay. Now, so once you do this, then uh, now table itself is not very nice if you leave it plain. So you need to do some formatting here. So go into the uh, Power BI desktop. I'm going to go to the previous year. I have this header here black color, uh, there isn't any alternate rows. I have the total here in black, all right? So uh, you can slowly explore because there are so many parts into here. You need to keep doing and doing to be very familiar with other functions, all right? So uh, right inside here, click here. Remember, you want to do the formatting, uh, you need to go into the second icon in the visualization panel. 
is called formatting your visual. Uh, style presets. So in style presets, it's go by default, nothing. But you click on today's, you can choose uh, minimal. This is how it looks like. If you don't like this, you can go into both header. This is how it looks like. Okay. Or you can choose uh, alternating rows. So uh, play with this. This one looks pretty good because you've got the black color and you got the alternating row. So okay, I'm going to settle for this. Now, remember uh, in here, not nice to have an uh, empty white patch and then you fill it up because it's going to still feel boring, uh, plain looking. So if you remember the earlier video, we need to put in uh, the background, all right? Using a picture. So let's go into empty space, go into the format visual here. Now this is to format the page. Um, going to wallpaper, go to browse. I'm going to use back the same data that I had and this bike data, all right? Keep one or two pictures, nice one in there, and you will form the background. And same thing, I'm going to put in 70%. Uh, I can also change the number here by typing instead of using the uh, sliding bar. All right. Now, that's what I want to show you. Now, once you put in a, a picture, background picture here, you notice it's not going to be very nice because you see all the white right patches here. Okay. So, how do you get rid of that? Uh, click onto the table now all right go to the format visual here you go into general you go into effects uh table also have a background so in the background here it is color uh, to remove the white color all right there is no like no data or clear color but you can always put this to clear transparency and you see that it will fit nicely into your visual with all the pictures in there. So this would look much nicer than white patches. Okay. Plus you can reduce this now. Notice that once you reduce it too small, the scroll bar will appear on the uh, horizontal scroll bar and the vertical scroll bar. So make sure you have enough to complete the whole thing. All right. Now numbers like this, not acceptable because nobody will look at the numbers in so many digits. So in a table itself, you need to format the number. Now, uh, in Excel, you know, usually if you don't know how to do the formatting, you will just divide the uh, 1 million and then get this and then manually type in the numbers, okay? All right. Uh, in here, donate too, because in the table here, you can go into format visual. You go into the values. In the values here, you got the values. In the values here, you will have oh, okay, not yet. This is a specific column, All right? So you notice there are too many, uh, many parts here. So let's go into the specific column. Uh, series is here. You click onto this, you can change it into sales. And in sales here, you will see that the values here got no text color, no background here. They just follow the preset and display unit here, right? None. So I'm going to show. Because these are big numbers, I'm going to show this uh, to be presented in millions. Oh, too many numbers. That is because the decimal places, all right, you can also change the value decimal places and say, uh, let's say it's in million. I'm going to put in two decimal places. Whoa, does it look much, much better now? Okay, uh, you can actually adjust the column wave here to make it nicer and a bit more spread out. Don't squeeze everything into one. Now, bosses would like to see them in millions because bosses would like to see them in millions because uh, it is easier to remember. They cannot remember all the digits there. Come on, uh, let's face it. Even you can't remember, all right? Unless you are a super genius. So we always need to give them in... Uh, Easy to remember number like 8 million, 24 million. All right. Okay. So display them in millions. That will be perfectly good and nice looking as well. And they can also remember the number because it is lesser digit to remember. All right. Nobody say, oh, what well, is that number in 2017? It's 7,122,542. Now, by the time you write finish, you also cannot remember the, the, the first part of the number. So why not just say, 
8.079. Sounds better, easier to relate to as well. Okay, now uh, looking at this file, now I, I'm going to create a, a visual here and I'm going to use this visual where it shows me the group and the country. So the we need to pull in one more file to do the connection and I'm going to use sales territory key here and the sales territory report to pull the data. So uh, how do you actually go in and uh, in more table, we go into transform data, Anytime you want new data, new sources, you can always come inside here. Now there are two ways, remember, you can go to new sources here or you can do a right click. The, my favorite is the shortcut, new query. Go into Excel workbook. Okay, now go to the table. Uh, this one shouldn't be a problem for you because this is looking at some table that you are familiar with. This one I'm more familiar with, all right? So it should be deemed sales territory, click open, Okay, select sheet one, and you will see that in here, the sales territory, there are 10, 0 to 10, that will be 11 territory. I'm going to check the box to say I want this sales territory to be uh, added in into my model. So click OK. Now then, there is one more function in Power Query, okay? One extra function that I'm gonna show you uh, at this module here is to filter, all right? So uh, I don't want corporate HQ. So I can take the two ways, I can filter the sales territory key, uh, sales territory key uh, or the region, uh, anything that can remove it. So I'm going to use the sales territory key and uncheck number 11. So click OK. 11 gone, the corporate HQ gone, because there is no sales that come from corporate HQ. It comes from the different country, different region. Okay, now another thing I want to change right at the beginning is I need to change the sheet one name. I, it doesn't look professional to have the name here show at sheet one, right? So double click onto this one, change it to the word region. So this becomes the regional query for region query. All right now, another thing, sales territory key, I can leave it there. Uh, I need that for the connection. I don't need the alternate key. I need the region. Uh, so we are going to remove the alternate key. So right click on this, remove, done. Now I'm going to change this one to region. Okay, I'm going to change this one to country. You can also change the header as you complete this. So this is another function of Power Query Editor. All right, so this one change it to group. Uh, group refers to, in this case, uh, European group, the Pacific group, or the North American group. Okay, so once you change all the number, you can close and apply. Go in, we go into the data model. Okay, now the regional table will be here. Ah, okay, now another problem if I cannot connect because uh, if I try to connect the regional, uh, the sales directory key, you notice that this one doesn't have a summation, this one has a summation, right? Now let me share with you what it means. When you have a summation here, it means this is a number. Uh, this one is not a number. Okay, so let's go back to transform data. We need to make sure that they are of the same data type before you can actually connect to get something like VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP also, you need to have the same data type. All right, so uh, we go to uh, sales data. We scroll to the right and look for the sales directory key. Uh, that will be over here. Now you notice that the data type here is data type text. All right, if you go to the region here, all right, it, the data type here is uh, whole number. So I need to make sure that they are the same data type. Either you put both of them into whole number or put all, all of them into text. Uh, make more sense to make this a text because I'm not going to sum, sum up a regional sales directory tree. Okay, so click onto the data type, change it to text. Okay, once done, let's go back and close and apply. Done, loaded, working on it. 
Okay, now sometimes they will do the auto connection, but they cannot detect the co connection here. So we need to take the sales directory key, drag and drop it into the sales directory key on the regional table. And you will get connected here. Uh, one sales directory key in the table will link to many sales directory key in the sales data. Repetitive uh, sales directory as well. Okay, so now once you can go into report here. Now instead of showing it the year here, we're going to take out the year and I'm going to put in the group. So let me look for the regional table. I'm going to put the group into the about the date here and it'll show me the date. But at the same time, I'm not going to put the date here, right? You can make the visual too complicated. So I'm going to show you the, the group, but I'm going to do a slicer for the year, just like what you see in the completed report, all right? So let me remove the date, all right? Open up more, okay? The number is still formatted. The groups are over here. This is how it looks like. So this is one table. Uh, okay, let me leave a bit of space. Okay, this table here, I'm going to do a slicer so that I can click and change the year. So go into the uh, visual, click somewhere, go into the slicer visual, click on it. Okay, it pops up here, just move it. And I'm going to put in the date. I'm going to put in the year into the field. Okay, now go to the format visual. I'm going to change the slicer settings into buttons. So it's called PAL over here. We don't call it buttons. And you can see that the dates are all presented. Financial year. Okay, remember financial or fiscal year. That's how you get started. Now, uh, you can put financial year here to make it easy to understand. So I can go into uh, formatting the visual. We can have the slicer setting. We can turn on the header here. And I can call this financial or fiscal year. Okay, you can bold the text here to make it obvious. Uh, black color font is fine. Now I don't want um I don't want the the, the white background doesn't look nice doesn't look pretty right. So go to general here effects. I'm going to change the transparency. Same thing background is going to be filled up here. Uh, not so obvious, but if people want to see, they can see right. Now the buttons can also be changed in terms of color. So go to visual here. Click on this here, then go to values. Uh, you can change the background of the buttons here. I'm going to leave it a slightly lighter goal over here. Okay, I'm going to take the values here. I'm going to bold this to make it more obvious. All right. Now, I, you can also format the header. <laughs> you can go to the Texas header, the border, you have background. So I can click onto the background if I want to. Click on this. Let's say I choose a uh, black color. Okay, this will form the header if you like it, right? Then, of course, once it's black, the font size has to be a different color. So I'm going to go white. Okay, now I leave it to you to change the color format to something that you like and easy to read. Now, the other thing that we're going to do is I'm going to use this and recycle for the country view. So we have a group uh, numbers, but at the same time in a report itself, it is easy for people to look at the country as well. So I'm going to take this report here, do a control C to copy the visual, control V to paste the visual, put it onto the left here, Okay, now well, this is going by group. I'm going to take out the group and I'm going to go into the region here. I can put the country into the column and now they will show me the sales by country. And notice that the format will stay. So format one table, make it nicely, spend a little bit of effort. Then use that table. If you want it to have the same format, uh, this would be a good way to uh, kick the format and change it, right? So 77 million here. Now these two are actually interactive. If I click Europe, you'll notice that this table will filter to show only Europe numbers. They're kind of North America, they'll show only two countries. I go to the Pacific, it only shows me Australia. 
I click on the Pacific again, it will show me the full view again. Now, then of course you can also change the year. If I click on slider 2020, the number will change to 12.65 million. This is the number for 2020. It will go be, it's going, once it's selected, it's going to be in black in color. Uh, can't change the color here, we will explore. Hopefully Microsoft will give that extra feature to change, to change it to a different color. So go to 2019, this will be the numbers, all right? So you can put a table together, okay, side by side here, align it, uh, flush it together. Now let's come to the exciting part, uh, map visual. So click on today's, you go into the visual here called the map, click on it, okay. Let's increase the size here. I can put the map visual all the way to the end here. Uh, remember no white patches because of the background. All right, so how do we put the numbers in? Very easy, location, you can simply drop the country in, all right, and they will show you all the dots of a map. So these are the uh, country of sales, which will tie into this one. The numbers are all here, but I also want to show them as a bubble. So it becomes visually effective and there is a form of comparison as well, the big bubble and the small bubble to know which country has more sales compared to another country. Now, of course, this is blue, not nice. So let's do both things. Uh, we can have the bubble size. So in the bubble size, I can go to the sales data, drag the sales into the bubble size. You will see that the bubble enlarge in uh, the United States, 20 million year. Uh, you can do this and it will show you Germany, 1.1 million, okay, according to the values over here. Now, of course, you want to contrast. So I'm going to go into the formatting of the map. Go to the bubble, go to the colors, and I'm going to change this one to match the color that I had. Uh, because most of them are white color background. So I'm going to use a darker color here. Okay, so this will become more contrasting and easy to locate as well. So this would be how the bubble will look like. So let me go back to the final product that I created here. Uh, okay, it looks the same. All right, so finally, once you do this, uh, okay, remember the header, you need to change uh, sales by country. Do you really need a header? Don't need, right? So if you don't have the header, you can go to format the visual, go to the uh, title. Map settings, let's go to general, the title here, turn off. Yeah, all right. Of course, you can also uh, turn on the title and say sales by country. Uh, sales by country. Maybe that works well. And of course, I would suggest you change the uh, background color to black, text color to white. Okay, of course, you can use other colors as well. Okay, finally, we come to the pie chart here. Now, pie chart can give us a different visual from the group table sales here. So in this case, I'm going to take the pie chart. Okay. Okay, uh, you can resize later as well, up to you. Then I can put in the values. So I'm going to use sales values and the legend itself, uh, different, different parts. So I'm going to use group in the regional, uh, the region tab here, and I'm going to show you the uh, legend, and you're going to show me the sales by group, okay? Now, if you want a very nice picture here, you may not want to put the legend uh, over here. So what I will do is I will go into, and it's, it takes a lot of space, All right? So I'm going to go to formatting, go into the details label, okay? It is going to be outside here the values, okay, display unit, ah, slices, sorry, slices here. Okay, let's get rid of the background first. So go to general, go to effects, and same thing, I'm going to do this. Now you can put this as transparency to be, say, 70%. You don't have to make it all 100%. You want maybe a bit of thin background to retain the color itself. Then 70% uh, looks pretty uh, good based on 
uh, what I have seen so far. All right. So in here, I'm going to change the font. So let's go back to visual. We're going to go back to the legend here, the text uh, size and the increase. So this is for the legend. I don't want the legend, right? So I will turn off the legend. Now, they, uh, details label over here. So it's going to position outside. Uh, label content in here. I'm going to show the category, the percentage of total. So show Europe, Pacific, and North America. Okay, now remember always go to 100%. Is it big enough? Uh, doesn't look very obvious. So I'm going to bold this, increase the size to maybe 12. Looks probably good. All right, this should be quite a nice size. If you want a header here, you can you can also um, put in the header, right? So up to you. I'm going to leave this. I don't want to show patches of it because here I already got patches. So you can leave it like this if you want to. Uh, I'll leave it to you. I'm sure you are better at this. Okay, so right now we finish this and this will be our visual uh, level two, right? You need to know how to create a... Uh, map visual, the table visual, do a bit more formatting. There's always a good practice there. You learn how to do some form of power query editing, cleaning, transformation in the data source, filter only the one that you want, and you actually learn how to use a simple DEX plus creating a date table. Okay? All right. So let's pause here for a while. What is next? Okay, so uh, I think for level two, I'm not going to go into the online thing uh, right at the moment because that one, I'll leave it to the end. More, we're going to focus more on the visualization part. So uh, level two, that is, that is what we're going to, uh, that's what I'm going to cover. I hope you like what you see. Uh, you have a better idea now what is uh, Power Query, how do you clean data easily and get an update. You know how to do some of the DEX formula. You know that now Power Query can uh, edit delete columns. And you know how text can do all sorts of calculation. You know how to link the table together. Okay. Uh, if you have forgotten some of the functions that I just uh, write off in summary, go back and watch the video again. Okay. And you may need to watch a few more times, but more important, do it in order to get the hang of it. Right. Practice as much as possible. You will be a good data visualization person uh, using Power BI. And your boss will definitely be impressed with what you can do. Right and show off to your boss. Now, do it, learn it before your, your colleague do it. And once it becomes too common, I tell you, you lose the wow effect. So what you want to do is learn as early as possible. It's going to be something that is, that is to be stay, to stay uh, in the next five years. So it's a good investment, it's good return once you learn how to do Power BI, and how to do data visualization. Okay, so that's all I have for you. Remember, if you like this, do like inside the YouTube video. You can put in comments there, whatever you like. I would love to have some feedback and bounce back from you as well to say, hey, you know, this is good. I learned something new. Then at least I know that I'm going to the right direction. Okay, so level two of Power BI Desktop, there will be another six to eight levels. Uh, and I'm going to create a video out of it, right? So stay tuned. Uh, subscribe to my channel and hopefully you will learn some more things uh, as we come along. All right. So uh, that's all I have for you. Uh, my name is Jason and from Everyday Excel Business Lab. Anytime you want, you can always go to uh, our website, everydayexcel.com and you can look at some of the courses that we do if you like to, you know, send somebody for training to create this thing, which is powerful. All right. Okay. Don't have. Thank you very much and see you again.